All right. Hello. Good morning. Welcome, you all. Thank you so much for making it to the session and on a Wednesday morning. So, first of all, so the topic of my uh, presentation today is neural style transfer: the art and science of generative AI. Yes, generative AI, the buzzword. So, I actually work in Bay Area, and I often find myself in conversations where we are talking about generative AI as a bubble. I just want to ask, how many of you here feel like it is similar to something like? a uh, crypto bubble and those nfc nft bubbles and stuff how many of us okay there are some people uh and how many of you feel that this is like the breakthrough technology and this is going to take over the jobs of all software engineers okay no one is on the extremes everyone is like okay this is something and but maybe not something revolutionary just something that probably will integrate into our daily lives as life goes on I'm kind of on the same uh, page. I also feel like this is something that is going to be very useful in the coming times, but not uh, like take jobs of software engineers. Like, <laughs> all right, let's talk about uh, neural style transfer, the art and science of generative AI. So, neural style transfer. What is? Let's talk about what neural style transfer is. It is basically a concept of taking a content image and a style image and creating a third image, which is. uh taking the keeping the content same and uh applying different styles or different uh kind of art, uh, brush strokes or art technologies to the content image and creating a whole new image uh what i said probably didn't make sense so here is uh what i mean basically what we are taking is a uh, a content image the content of which is going to remain the same in the output and then a style image which we are going to take the styles from and then generate this new image which is probably not so nice in this case but yeah would you like to take a guess on which one of these is ai generated and which one of these is actually human made which uh, who thinks this one is uh, ai generated okay and who thinks this one is Oh wow! Okay, I caught you guys. So this one is AI generated. <laughs> All right. I was kind of thinking everyone will be like, get it right, but okay. <laughs> so how does neural style transfer basically work? Uh, it uses a pre-trained convolutional neural network. We'll talk about what convolutional neural networks are in the next slide. Uh, but basically, what neural style transfer does is it takes a CNN and adds some loss functions with some style transformations and generates a completely new image. Um, let's see what. Yeah. So, what are CNNs? What are convolutional neural networks? CNNs are basically deep learning, uh, deep learning neural networks. basically machine learning models that are uh, used to kind of that are used mainly in the field of image analysis and are used to guess what the contents of an image are let's try to understand this uh, in a very simple way so think of filters as as detectives there are small filters basically you gave an image of for example a cat to the machine now there are some filters that act as detectives these detectives have a different job each of them has a different job one detective is for example looking for lines in the image one is looking for all the edges one is looking for all the shapes for all the patterns and stuff like that and what all of these do is they work in layers basically so all these detectives have their individual roles and they are working in layers so firstly all of them will uh, look for all the edges and in the second layer they'll look for something more complex like patterns or shapes and in the next one it'll look uh, combine them with colors and will look for some object and try to make a sense out of that picture and then we have pooling so sometimes we give an image of basically a cat but there is a very busy background in the background we have a lot of redundant things that we probably don't want the image uh, to kind of consider into the uh i mean they are not the main object in the image so we want them to not get considered so that is where pooling comes in pooling takes the top 5 or whatever number you give top k uh, objects in the picture into consideration in order to recognize what the object is like the what the main subject is in the image and next we have fully connected layers so fully connected layers are kind of like the boss of all these detectives all these detectives uh after capturing their individual objects that they were looking for they gave uh, they go to the fully connected layer which has a pre-trained data set of images for example images of common objects like 
a water bottle, cat, dog, and all these things. And then it will uh, kind of, you know, say the bottom line that, okay, uh, according to my pre, uh, pre-trained image data set, I can totally say that the, the image is of a dog or of a cat. And then there is the learning aspect to it, which is like the constant evolution. Whenever the um, CNN makes some mistakes, it learns from itself and it con- constantly keeps learning until it uh, gets improved. Next we have, so what does NST need as an input? By now we kind of established that it needs two things as an input. One is the content image, the content of which are going to remain the same in the final output. And one is the style image from where we are going to copy the style of the artist or style of uh, basically the style of the image that we give as an input. And the output is going to be a generated neural style transfer image. And uh, okay, let's see how does the process work. So first we have detecting content. First, what uh, once you feed the image to the neural network, what we, what it will do is basically the CNN will uh, start looking for objects, patterns, shapes, colors, and basically what is the content of the image. It will not give any uh, consideration to what the artwork of the image looks like or what are the brush strokes, what are the patterns and all that. The main objective is only going to be what is the content of this image. Then we have capturing styles. So next, uh, it is also done using CNNs. What we are going to do is we are going to capture the colors, the brush strokes, the artwork of uh, of the second image. And in the end, we are going to generate uh, an output image, basically. All right, let's talk about um, how the... Uh, what are the neural networks or what are the what are the networks that are used on the uh, back side of all this algorithm so first we have the pre-trained uh, feature extractor model pre-trained feature extractor model basically stands for a neural network that is trained on a large data set of images think of it like coco uh, data set famous names that we use in the industry are resnet or vgg which is visual geometric uh, visual geometric group. So these two you might already have heard of. These are basically neural networks that have been trained on large data set of common images that we use in our day-to-day lives. And uh, basically what is its role in NST is to detect what is the content of the content image. It works in multiple layers and uh, the idea is to basically detect one or two main contents of the image to be able to recreate them in the, in the style image. And the second one is a style network. So style network is also a pre-trained feature extractor. It it is trained in a different way as uh, it is not looking for the content. It is basically looking for the style work as we basically talked about. And its role in uh, neural style transfer is to uh, dissect the characteristics of the artwork. And how do they both come together? So basically uh, once we have both of these in place, Uh, we are just going to generate a new image, keeping the content same. And by keeping the content same, I mean, uh, we are going to keep the edges and the lines same. If any of you has ever used Huff Transform, you probably know that we are going to keep the edges same and the lines same uh, by using Huff Transform and some other techniques like that. And only going to change the artwork and the colors. One major application of real world is the application Prisma. Uh, it got popular sometime in like, I think 2016-ish. So has anyone used Prisma or heard of Prisma? Okay, some people. Yeah, so what it is doing is basically we are treat, uh, giving a content image and it is it has a preset a feature extractor that that is kind of native to Prisma, and it is going to create this 3D artwork embossed kind of uh, image coming out of it. <clears throat> Let's do a quick recap of how does all of this work. So we saw content and style, there are two images, content image and style image, content image has the content, style image has the style, and the neural networks, we learned a little bit about what neural networks are and what is CNN and how does CNN play a role here. and Uh, Then the comparison happens, the comparison between the given content image and the generated neural style transfer image. And we can kind of iterate it over and over as as long as we want uh, to get the result we want. 
And then a new image is created. And the magic of math is basically, yeah, how CNN works in the back end. And then iterations, we can have as many iterations of this as we want, and we can apply this on multiple uh, uh, style images. And then the result. Implementations. So this technique, although it is very new, because this is also a part of generative AI, um, AI is kind of very advanced in a way that it it is very advanced in pattern recognition and recognizing what are the contents of the image, but not so much in the field of generative AI or generating content and not at all close to the way humans generate content. So uh, the applications are still very in very naive stage and they are not really production ready, but we are still getting there slowly. So first of them is... Uh, video and film production. So this can be used in a variety of like movie productions. You might have seen it in, in some movie productions. For example, Prisma being a great uh, use case that we just saw. It can be used to mimic the artwork of famous filmmakers or uh, the direction style of famous directors and stuff like that. Basically, uh, low budget movie production makers can use it to copy the style of high high budget movie makers. And next is photography. We can use NS2 to enhance or apply the style of different photography techniques to uh, the image that we want. And uh, the next one is design and branding, architecture and interior design. I mean, I don't have to talk about all of these because we can see how the work will manifest in real life, right, using NSD. One of the more... Uh, one of the kind of emerging use cases of NSTs that I'm also working on is medical imaging. So medical imaging, uh, sometimes we need to enhance the images. For example, look, think of X-ray. We need to enhance the X certain features of an X-ray which are more relevant to your case than, uh, than others. So this is a field where this kind of technique is catching up uh, pretty quickly. And you can also think of applications in VR, image to image translation, data visualization, educational tools, image enhancement. Pretty much that. Yep, that was my presentation. Hope you guys liked it. That's all.